Hello, I'm Louise and I'm a bariatric dietitian at St Richard's Hospital. This video is going to talk you through the pre-operative liver shrinkage diet, also known as the milk diet. This is a low cost and uncomplicated diet to follow to prepare you for surgery. This diet shrinks the size of your liver before surgery, which allows the surgeon access to your stomach and reduces the risk of damage during the operation. Following this diet can be challenging, so you may find it helpful to keep in mind the reasons for doing it so you stay motivated. If your liver is too large, this may obscure the surgeon's view of the stomach and your surgery could be abandoned. The length of time you need to follow the diet depends on your BMI and liver health. It is usually for a maximum of two weeks. Your bariatric team will confirm what date you need to start the diet. From midnight the night before surgery, you can only have clear fluids. That's water, black tea, black coffee and no added sugar squash. On the day of the surgery, you should have nothing at all to eat or drink an hour before coming into the hospital. Depending on the time of your surgery, this will either be from 6.30 or 11.30 a.m. If you have diabetes, please inform your diabetes team that you will only be consuming approximately 120 grams of carbohydrate per day. Your diabetes team will advise you on any changes to your oral medications or insulins. If you take insulin or oral medications that are linked with hypos, it's important that you check your blood glucose levels at least four times per day and know how to treat a hypo correctly. If you have any questions, please get in touch. Every day you must have the following. Four pints of either semi-skimmed cow's milk, lactose-free milk or soya original. Alternative milk such as oat, almond or rice milk are not suitable. To ensure you have the right amount of milk each day, it is useful to keep your milk separately to anyone else at home. Plan how you will space your milk allowance throughout the day so you are not left with too much or too little later on in the day. If you drink tea or coffee, use the milk from your allowance in these drinks. To give you variety, you can add sugar-free syrups to your milk to make a milkshake. For example, crusher or skinny syrups. Double check that these are sugar-free before using. They are available in most supermarkets. On top of your milk, you should drink an additional two pints of calorie-free fluid. This can be water, tea or coffee with no sugar or sugar-free squash. You can use sweeteners in your tea or coffee if you want to. You will also need to include one salty drink every day. This could be bovril, marmite or dissolving a stock cube in a pint of boiling water. Alternatively, you could add one teaspoon of table salt into a pint of strongly flavoured squash. You can sip this throughout the day. This is important to try and prevent headaches and meet your salt requirements. It is important that you continue to take your multivitamin and mineral tablet and vitamin D tablet every day throughout the diet. You should also continue with any other supplements that have been recommended by the team following your last blood test. While following the diet, you are allowed to have sugar-free jelly. A maximum of one sachet, making up one pint of jelly, or five 115 grams ready-to-eat pots can be eaten per day. You are also permitted to have three pieces of chewing gum per day. Your bowel habits are likely to change while following the diet. The most common side effect is constipation. We recommend you take milk of magnesia, benny fibre or movicol to relieve these symptoms. You may experience diarrhoea while following the diet. If your bowels are loose but not frequent, this is not a concern. But if you experience persistent diarrhoea, then contact your bariatric dietitian for advice. Your energy levels are likely to be low while following the diet and you may also feel irritable and hungry. You may also experience headaches. Ensuring you are well hydrated is important and it is also helpful to ask for support from those around you. Keep in mind the reasons for following the diet. Remember the diet is preparation for surgery and not for weight loss. It should only be carried out under the supervision of a dietitian. You can refer to pages eight to nine in your booklet for more details. Please contact the bariatric office if you have any questions. Thank you.